Ah, bonjour. Nathan and Nesh Dekar, Makoro Den. Nenon Jaba, Waswagani, Ninda, Minawaki. So, my name is Nathan. I'm, uh, my family's from uh, Lac de Flambeau. I currently reside here in uh, the Milwaukee area. I am a second year PhD student at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And uh, my research has been on the, the sugar maples. Um, so, I thank you all for um, allowing me to. Uh, interrupt your meeting. Uh, I understand it's been a long meeting and I, I know how those go. So uh, hopefully my uh, presentation will be interesting and uh, keep you guys uh, intrigued here. So as my first slide says, is so maples and how we live with, how we live with them, right? <clears throat> so during my, my th this has been an ongoing research for me for uh, many years, so it hasn't been just, just this summer, um, but this summer has, I've dove into the science aspect of this more. Um, so as this slide says, indigenous people have been seeking to transcend the history of pain and loss that has begun 500 years ago with, with the colonization of Miknaki. <clears throat> Mikna in these years, the indigenous people have suffered murderous onslaughts, greed, disease, and oppression that has not always been seen. The rest of the compulsion is to remain in control of this knowledge and remain strong. However, the indigenous people we fight to reclaim that this indigenous knowledge and integrate this knowledge into the Western knowledge. So that's my whole my whole purpose is trying to get that what I call the traditional ecological knowledge, the combination of the Western knowledge and our traditional knowledge um, to the forefront. And I do this by looking at the looking at the sugar maple, the Ninnyatuk, Aninatuk, Ajbagomen, Gnamish, or the Sacarum. Sugar maple, hard, hard maple, the rock maple are all different words that we use to describe this tree, this being that, that I'm looking at. So while I'm looking at this, um, through this interesting lens of indigenous and science, uh, we look at it as much like the water systems, right? So the roots, the roots are the tributaries that are carrying out the water or the energy, the nutrients up to the canopy of the tree just like the water, the tributaries carry the water and to the to the Great Lake, right? And this can also be seen in the human body, right? So, like our arteries and veins are all are carrying all the nutrients to our vital organs, so we can survive, right? Same thing with the trees. Same thing with the water. What you take out any integral part of this, and, and life ceases to exist, right? So, if you look at the tree, right? All this stuff flows through the, the xylem, from the roots to the trees. And the, this exchange of oxygen and, and carbon dioxide comes at, not just at the leaves. It's also part, partly in the, tree, in, the, in the bark of the tree, but also more in the leaves um, <clears throat> where, where you get this exchange. And you can see this during, during the severe temperature changes. If you look at, the, at the, uh, the canopy of trees, you can see that fog because there is a difference in the tree. In, in the temperature from the, the oxygen that's coming out of the stomata uh, of the tree and, and the stuff that's in the environment. So you get that little fog or the glaze. You can really see that in the Amazon forest and those, those dense forests. You got a lot of that, that fog that you see because of the change in temperatures. That's much like, much like a human. When you see that when we go outside in a, in a cold day and you breathe out, we see that fog that comes out, that steam that comes out. Or if you look at a on the lake, you see that steam rising because of the change in temperatures. It's a very similar thing. Again, combining that 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 notion that we are all related, that we're all one being, right? So we look at if we go back to this the diagram of the tree, in the tree in the tree, this everything goes up and down, right? So from the the roots, they grab all the nutrients from from around the tree, the, the environment around the tree. It carries it up. Through the trunk up to the canopy, where it then feeds feeds the buds of the leaves, so they can the the buds and leaves can grow, and then the buds and leaves take on take on taking the nourishment from the sun and the in the rainwater, and that brings it back down, and that's where we get you can see that in the in the wood and the rings of the wood, and the when the we have a lot of water, then the, those rings are wider. If we have a, a drought season, then the rings are are narrower, right? So that we get, gathering all that that nutrients from not just around the tree, not just from the air, but around the tree, right? So if you look at it from the, from the rivers, it's the same thing. Those rivers and streams 
or those tributaries collect all the water from, from the ground. That water does not just come from the air, from the rainwater, that comes from, from the ground. And those rivers and tributaries run through the fields and the industries and cities, collecting all the, nurt the nutrients from these areas and dumping them off into the lakes. So that's, if you look at, at these, some of the things I did was collect data from the water in the three, the three rivers in Milwaukee and the lakes. And if you look at it, the night, I know the graph is kind of hard to see and I apologize for that. Um, nitrites level are very high in the river system. As you go out into the lake, you get out to the lake, it, it dissipates because you, we're getting, getting away from the city and it's, there's more, um, more water to dissipate that. Um, although because of the limestone in there, you, you do see, see elevated levels of ammonia and carbon, carbonates in there. Now if you look at some of the sap that I gathered this, this year from uh, Madison, Ogima, and Detroit, um, you see the same, same nutrients that are in the water are found in the sap. Um, and again, if you look at, at our blood, what's in our blood, you'd find some of the same nutrients inside, that, inside our blood that you'd find in the water and, and in the sap. Now my results of the, my research have been inconclusive because it's only been one year. Um, so, but what, we, what I could tell you is that the same nutrients that are found in the water systems are still found in the sap um, and are just boiled out to, uh, to get that syrup. Um, so now if you, <clears throat> in the springtime, again, as I said, the, the nutrients are getting carried up to the tree, right? And that's where, that's when we go out and harvest that sap. We go out and harvest that sap and boil it, boil it down as nourishment. Some of, some of the, uh, the elders say that you, you are supposed to drink some of that sap throughout that process every day because it, it's supposed to help revitalize you, help, help to, to uh, give you more energy, help to uh, just heal you. Um, that's all part of this whole process that we do uh, and we're, during the sugar bush time. So not only do we utilize this tree at this time, the National Phenology Network PN, also utilizes the sugar maple and to decipher when spring has arrived in a certain location. So not only do our people go to our spring camps back in the day for when the sap is running, but now the, the, the science community is looking at these trees and going, oh, the sap is running, the buds are starting to form, spring must have arrived at this, at this location. So now now there's a whole website that, that is dedicated to monitoring these trees and, and to delineate when spring has arrived at certain locations. So now if you look at the last one, zigzag is to pour, or zagabag is, is the budding, right? And that morphemes into zag, or the opening. The bag is the leaves. Or you can even look at it as zage, to love, which when you start diving into that, that's a pretty interesting concept, to open or to love, are very similar. Um, which I found intriguing and uh, numerous for numerous different reasons. So in the summer in the summer months, after those leaves have formed, that's when the the, the tree starts collecting the nutrients from the sun and the and the upper canopies, right? And again, um, nibin for summer morphemes into nibi, which means water. So if you look at it during that time frame, there's water that's all over the place. We're, we're not getting the snow. We're not getting we're getting rain, right? Um, in theory, uh, unless it's a drought season, then, then there's a lack of the rain. And then as I told you earlier, that's when you don't, the trees don't grow as much, right? So then we go to the, the guagan, the fall. In the fall, that's when the phosphorus is, is running rampant in the sap. And that's to, to, uh, to promote the generation of, uh, of seeds, because that's when the, the seeds start to fall on, on the maple trees. Um, the ironic part here with the with the maples is that the, when the leaves fall off, they utilize it uses the, its own leaves to create nourishment for that tree, so that it, it has nourishment to make it through the winter time. So in Daguag and morphemes into Daguag or Daqua, which also means short. So everything is becoming shorter in, in fall, as we know. The time the the daytime starts coming shorter. The, the temperature starts starts to fall. It's just a shorter a shorter time frame. So now just to give a shout out to, to the places that I have been monitoring, Detroit's sugar bush in 2020. This is where the, this is at, at Rogue Park where they, they harvested their, their sap. 
and the way they do it is they tap their trees and they and they collect it into into these Home Depot buckets. Um, it's right off of uh, Stonebridge Trail in Detroit, um, which is outside of Detroit. I also was at Spring Green, and this is how they they were collecting um, their sap out there in Spring Green, just using some pails um, that they could find and and boiling it down that way. This is the maple, the sugar grove in Green, a small grove but uh, efficient nonetheless. Now this is the front view of the boiler that they were using to render down the sap at, uh, at Spring Green. Um, they have the science down to log every seven minutes to keep the fire, the fire hot enough to boil the sap down. And if you look, look at the top here, there's, there's different spacers to help to regulate the temperature in each area. So it's one area is not getting hotter uh, than the next. This is just a side view of it. And this top part of over here is a container so that when they pour in the sap, it's already warmed up so that it doesn't down the whole process and cause you to reheat the whole sap and, and, and uh, waste time. Now the boiler up in Ogima is a little bit different. Um, they, they put the, the back half of this um, is full of sand to heat so the, uh, the heat will spread out evenly. Um, up in Ogima, they bought, they've made 15 pounds of sugar and six gallons of syrup this year, uh, um, which was, a, was about 300 gallons of sap that they, they've collected. They have an extra long smokestack so they can, with the inclement weather, they can put a uh, tarp over it um, if need be, as you all uh, know that uh, the, the weather can change on a dime just like that. So they like to be prepared. Um, and this whole process is, is to, to get this nice, the sweet taste of maple syrup or the maple sugar. Um, it's the time consuming process, but as our, as our ancestors have told us that there's a, there's a lot of medicine in there, a, a lot of goodness that comes out of it. Um, and then there's all, all stories for that about Wayne Bujo and uh, the Mishomises that talk about why we have these uh, people and why, why these beings are here to take care of us. So that's all I have for my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Nathan, fascinating. Uh, let's, let's hear from the panel here if we have some questions about your, your work, um, Miwich. Oh, Belle has her hand up. Go ahead, Belle. Yeah, hi, Nathan. That that was an incredible presentation. Just really great work. And just, I was wondering, because I, I couldn't see the slides as well, who was your mentor? Uh, Margaret Newton. Okay, yeah. And, and I caught that with the, um, the, uh, the language and the reference to... Um, and I didn't, the, to love and to open, and she's pointed out to me before about how that's also in um, the word for lake as well, yes. lakes as well. So that was really beautiful. And um, my question is about, uh, did you create those images with the trees and the, the roots and the rivers and the tributaries? Um, or, or did you pull those from somewhere else? And either way, you just did a really beautiful job in explaining uh, you, your words with those images. It was just very rich. And so I was wondering where they, where they came from. Well, thank you. Um, I, I wish I could take all the credit for that, but um, part of it was uh, one of the, a couple of the scientists that I was working on, we, we devised, we, we did it on a, on a piece of paper talking about how, mm -hmm. How the trees and the tributaries were were related. I threw in the the, the circulatory system because yes. in yes. a former former life I was a paramedic, so I had I had mm -hmm. knowledge in my brain, and so I was when we were talking, I'm like, this is almost like the circulatory system. So yeah, that that's how this all kind of came about in full play. Because uh, again, I'm not the science aspect of this was new to me. So mm -hmm. when they were trying to explain it to me, they that they brought up. They drew it out, actually drew it out on a, on a diagram on a tree. And I was like, oh, that's beautiful. That makes perfect.
perfect sense to me. If, if, if I can understand it, then I need to, I need to explain this to other people because that's going to make yeah. sense to them too. Right. So it was a combination of, of, uh, a couple scientists, Carl and, uh, Russell cool. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It was so powerful and, and it really highlights the value of using different uh, sciences, indigenous and Western sciences together. Really beautiful work. Really enjoyed awesome. that. Thank you very much, Phil.